So vetiver is one of my favorite notes and fragrances, and today we're going to go ahead and discuss my top 10 underrated vetiver fragrances in my collection. Coming right up. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Sebastian with Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great. And that's right, I am a big fan of vetiver and fragrances, and I've got probably about 30 bottles of fragrances with a dominant vetiver note. Well, let's, let's say about 25. But there are several that I have that I thought were pretty underrated, and I wanted to put out a specific video just for those underrated fragrances listed from um, my top, you know, in, in the top 10 order from uh, number 10 all the way down to number one. And we also have a uh, honorable mention, I guess I should say, because I think this honorable mention is somewhat familiar, but again, it, it's overshadowed by the, the very popular fragrance in the same brands, uh, Vetiver fragrance, if that makes sense. So I have a video already out, my top 15 Vetiver fragrances, but that was put out almost two years ago. And so I needed to do another one, but I didn't want to put together a big 25 or whatever list I thought, let's do a vetiver fragrance list with just 10 underrated ones. So let's go ahead and get started with the honorable mention. And that fragrance is Guerlain Om Lo Boise right here. Now this is a flanker to the Om. It's, uh, I guess it means water, wood water or something, Lo, something like that. Boise is wood, of course, so I think it is the woody water or something like that. That's what it translates to. But it is a dominant vetiver fragrance. Of course, it's overshadowed by the very popular Guerlain Vetiver that everybody knows about. But this one's all Vetiver. It's got more uh, citrusy touch to me compared to the original Guerlain Vetiver. But um, there's some other spicy and woody notes in here. But it's very pleasant. And the only other thing also I want to mention is kind of has a pepperiness. Like there's black pepper note in here. So the Vetiver, the citruses, the black pepper and the woodiness all together make for a great fragrance. And I think this one is somewhat underrated, but still I think people do know about it. And I just wanted to add it here and just let you know that this is out there. If you know Guerlain's Vetiver, but you don't know this one, you should definitely check this one out as well because I think it's almost as good, if not better, than the original Vetiver by Guerlain. So that's number 11, or the honorable mention. So we'll go ahead and start with the top 10. And at number 10 is Mona Di Oreo's Vetiver right here. Now what's unique about Mona Diorio's Vetiver that it's smoky and somewhat animalic to me. Not heavily animalic, but it is. It's definitely Vetiver and it's definitely potent. It's very beast. Although this is the older bottle and they've gone through a transformation recently. The bottles have been redesigned. They become a little more feminine because it is after all a woman that created this brand. Uh, with with uh, another uh, with a man, I guess it was. They were partners in the perfume business until Mona Di Oreo died, and her legacy lives on through her perfumes. And um, uh, the bottles have been more kind of crafted to be more feminine, but not like overly uh, female. I mean, they're still appeal to the males as well, but they're no longer in these bottles. But again, the vetiver itself is a little smoky, very potent, <clears throat> and slight bit animalic but very, very good wet vetiver. Um, not many people talk about this vetiver, but I think you should all check it out. Again, uh, look for the bottles, but they're not gonna be, this bottle, as I said, they're gonna be a little different. It's got a lot more gold and it's more rounded rather than square. So Mona Di Oreo vetiver is number 10. At number nine, we've got a fragrance from a perfumer that has a brand named after himself. It's Mark Buxton, and this is Emotional Rescue, named after the song. Now this one, what I like about this one is vetiver, but there's got this like green fruity notes in it. It doesn't smell like fruity, it just smells green, like very green fragrance. So it's very, very earthy, dry vetiver with the fruitiness kind of adds like this, like, um, you know, like this um, wetness, perhaps juiciness to it. Again, it's not like a, a very uh, fruity, like fruit. So you're not going to be experiencing fruity fragrance. It's just all vetiver and green is basically what it um, boils down to. But it's, it's a wonderful fragrance and not many people talk about this. And actually not many people talk about his entire uh, line called Mark Buxton Perfumes, as you can see. But a, 
I, I want to check out, I think. So, Emotional Rescue at number nine. At number eight is a fragrance from a local San Francisco Bay Area indie perfumer, and that's Mira's Fine Fragrance, and the fragrance is called Citria. They come in these little 15 ml bottles, they're under $100. But this one is a very fresh, citrusy vetiver. Kind of in the ballpark of the Tom Ford um, gray vetiver, but this one's unique. There's a saltiness to it, but an overall very refreshing vetiver that I really, really like. And if you don't know this brand, we did a video about a, maybe like eight months ago, uh, going over the brand together and this fragrance was mentioned in it and we did a giveaway and, and uh, a subscriber did win Citria. And uh, I think he likes it. If, you, if you're watching, Patrick, hopefully you do like this one. But um, we do, we, uh, the brand is a great brand, but I fell in love with this one because it's all about Vetter and I'm a huge Vetiver fan. But the whole citrusy thing, this is perfect for summertime too. So Citria by Miris Fine Fragrance at number eight. So at number seven, it's a fragrance that I've already mentioned about. We've I've also done a video. It's Le Galeon's Vetiver right here. Now, what's unique about this one is that, uh, also it doesn't get talked much about, none of these do, but this one um, is unique because it's a, it's a fougere with vetiver. So you start out with aromatic fougere notes at the top, and then you get into the vetiver in the base. It dries down to smell more like vetiver. So very, very unique fragrance, very unique take on vetiver. And those of you that like vetiver, you want something a little different, a little more bite or something, a little uniqueness to it, definitely Vetiver by Le Galeon should do it. So do check it out. Uh, it's, it's number seven from Le Galeon. It's called Vetiver. And Vetiver here is with a Y. And also Vetiver from Mona Diorio is also with a Y. At number six, we've got a fragrance from a house that I've never spoken about, but I did shoot a video when I was in Europe. Uh, not with the brand, of course. I bought some of their fragrances uh, in Europe and I shot a video. I haven't aired it yet. Hopefully soon I'll air that. But this is um, a vetiver fragrance called Vetiver Spice by Bella Bellissima. Beautiful bottle, of course, also. It's a UK brand and it's a fresh, spicy vetiver. So you don't get the darkness of the vetiver here. You don't get the inkiness of the vetiver. It's all very fresh and uplifting to me, but still vetiver. So you do get that in the background, but it's one that you can tolerate if you don't like vetiver. Like I do like the dark or the light, but this one's on the light side. So if you want something a little refreshing, more along the line of the citrus, like the citria or the Tom Ford gray vetiver, this one should appeal to you. So this is called Vetiver Spice by Bella Bellissima. That's number six. So at number five, we have another San Francisco Bay Area perfumer. And this is also named after himself, like Mark Buxton. This is Bruno Fazolari with Lamp Black. Um, just FYI, the bottles are no longer like this. They have been changed, so you're gonna probably, same with the, the Mona Dioria, you're gonna find different bottles when you look for this. But this is the inkiest vetiver I have in this whole entire collection. Um, it's a dark, very inky, very smoky, earthy. Earthy is another keyword here, vetiver. Really, really nice potent stuff um, that I think you should definitely check out. So Bruno Falzolari, again, as I said, San Francisco, Bay Area, or mostly San Francisco, uh, indie perfumer, and this is, I believe, has won some awards, and I think has been written about by very well-known perfume critics. I can't remember the exact details, but do check out Lamp Black by Bruno Fazolari, that's at number five. So the next one is from a very well-known designer and uh, it doesn't get talked, the designer itself doesn't get talked much about in fragrance community. And that designer is Hermes, and this is Bellamy Vetiver right here. So this one doesn't get talked much about. It's a very spicy, um, leathery vetiver. And this one actually, um, I just included in my top 10 spring fragrances list because I think it just definitely is a perfect fragrance to wear in the spring. And again, not many people talk about this one, and I also included Equipage Geranium for, by Hermes, and I think that one deserves to be talked about, although that one's not Vetiver, it's more Geranium, and um, uh, I can't remember the exact notes, I think there's leather there too. But this one just totally deserves to be talked about, I think nobody's talking about it. Perhaps um, it's just Hermes is not a very hyped brand overall in general, but um, it definitely deserves it. So do check out Bellamy Vetiver, it's a very unique take on Vetiver, um, at number four. 
So at number three, a house that rarely gets talked about, and that house I'm talking about is Javois out of Paris. They have a store that sells all perfume uh, like lines, plus they have their own brand called Javois. This is private label. Man, this is such a potent fragrance. It is vetiver, but it's a lot more than vetiver. I get boozy here. Um, I get like whiskey, I get books, library, just maybe a little bit tobacco. Just a, a beast of a fragrance, like a manly, beastly, manly fragrance. So if you like your vetivers, like beastly and uh, just, you know, just that biggest, boldest type of vetiver, private label, <laughs> it should be the one you should definitely check out. So. I really love the brand. I, I've met the owner of the store and the brand. He's very nice, uh, Francois, and this is one of their most excellent releases. Private label by Jeffois, number three. This next one is a new discovery for me, and um, I really do love it. And Boozy Vetiver. And Boozy is something that I really like in fragrances. And this is by Etro. It's just called Vetiver right here. I'm going to spray this one because I've been wanting to wear it, and today will be the day. Um, Oh man, it's vetiver, but you get like this barrel-aged oak booze of some kind. I don't know what it is. But when you look up the notes, I think I'm Fragrantica, it says bourbon vetiver. So I'm assuming they've soaked the vetiver in some kind of bourbon, but you can smell the oak barrel. You know how the, the, the liqueurs smell like that? It smells just like that. This is so good. It's so, so good. I've discovered it very, very late. And I ended up with a bottle that's a 50 mil, and I should have bought a larger bottle, but this was on clearance at a store in Europe somewhere, and I just, you know, snatched it up. But I think I will have to end up with a 100 mil bottle. But what a great fragrance. It's a designer from Italy, Etro, and this is called Vetiver at number two. Boozy Vetiver. Last but not least, number one is by a fragrance house called La Lique. I'm talking about Ancre Noir, but I'm not talking about the original Ancre Noir. I'm talking about the Ala Extreme by right here class all the way and nobody really is talking about it like when i first got into fragrances four or five years ago and started my channel um first channel everybody was talking about uh, la ligue en crée noir and i ended up with a bottle and i really did like it and there's comparisons to sycamore by, uh, by chanel and which i think it does have more i mean it does have similarities but when you smell this you're going to say wow this is so close to sycamore compared to the original la ligue en crée noir but this one just very, very classy also. Like if you want something very classy, masculine, perhaps a little elegant, I would pull out and reach for the um, Ancre Noir à l'Extreme. Now when I bought this, there were no discounters selling it, so I bought it full retail in Europe. It was 110 euros. Um, but now you can find them at discounters for around, sometimes it goes down to like 40 bucks, just like the price of the original Vetiver, I mean the original Ancre Noir. So do check it out. It's very, very underrated. Performance is lackluster though. I mean, you get about six hours at the most, but still, it's an eau de parfum concentration. It smells so good. Like a great, great butterbur. So do check it out. Ange Noir à la Extreme is number one. So there you have it, my 10 underrated vetiver fragrances with one honorable mention. Is there an underrated vetiver fragrance that you have that I don't know about or nobody talks about? please list below or just write down what your favorite vetiver fragrance is in overall and we'll get a conversation started. Also, please like this video, guys. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. There should be a subscribe button coming right up and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>